Hey, what's up guys? This is Josh here from Blender Bros. And in this video, I wanna show you a pretty cool technique. This is going to essentially allow you to take a shape that's a little bit rough, a little bit bumpy, maybe some of the vertices are misplaced like you can see here. And what this technique will effectively allow you to do is turn this into something that's pretty much perfectly shaded, kind of like you can see right here. So it's very easy to do. It only requires one or two modifiers. Let's hop right into it. Now guys, if you're brand new to hard surface modeling, I would highly recommend picking up our Accelerator program. This is the number one hard surface modeling course for both beginners and intermediates with over 4,000 students, plenty of results you can see on the screen right here. And we're gonna get you very, very good at hard surface modeling in Blender in under two weeks with about 30 to 60 minutes a day. And we do that by simply giving you the best, most important tools and workflows in Blender. And we effectively leave out the rest so that way you're only focused on getting results as quickly as possible so if you're interested in that program i'll link it in the description below so what we need to do here if we want to get a result kind of like this i'm just going to go ahead and hide this one for right now is we need to first kind of figure out like what's going on here and it's pretty obvious that in this situation we have a lot of misplaced vertices it's just looking a little bit rough not very clean now there's one thing we could actually do here to fix this up this is more of a destructive workflow and it's still valid i'm going to kind of show you how to do that so what we're going to do here is we're going to press f3 and then search for smooth there's going to be an option here for smooth vertices okay now if i go there what i can actually do is i can slowly adjust the setting kind of like this you can also go to the repeat mode sometimes that'll you know get you a decent result as well and you're going to see in this case, it does a pretty decent job. But the issue here is it kind of distorts this upper area. Like before, you know, I still had a clean, you know, transition right here. But after I kind of lost that. Now, maybe that's OK for you. And if it is, you know, no problem. This is a valid strategy. I don't prefer this one because number one, it's destructive. And number two, it's a little bit less um, versatile. So what we're going to do here instead is we're going to use a modifier called the smooth modifier. Now, since we have a subdivision surface in this particular example, this is going to change things a little bit because the modifier stack is going to be important. Now, if I go in here and I add in a smooth modifier, you're going to see by default it's at the bottom of the stack. Now, this is just going to mess things up. It's not going to smooth very nicely. In this case, we actually want this to go after the subdivision because the subdivision is first going to round that out, smooth it out, and then the smooth is going to affect the geometry created by that subdivision. Now, there's another issue here is it's kind of pinching the outer area and also this bevel right here. If I adjust this, it's kind of losing that bevel. Now, if you're okay with that, you can just leave it alone. But if you kind of want to retain certain structures of your mesh, what you're going to want to do is use something called a vertex group. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to select these outer areas. So I'm just going to Alt and Shift click. And then same for up here. And then also, if I want to retain that bevel, it's probably a good idea that I go in here and kind of select some of these vertices that are kind of surrounding the where the bevel is going to be now in this case i want to invert the selection okay now it doesn't really matter you could just you know assign this there's an invert tool right here it doesn't matter how you want to do it i'm just going to go ahead and invert that selection i'm going to assign a vertex group here if you don't have one just click the plus button and then just deselect everything with alt a and then press select and deselect make sure those are actually selected sometimes it's a bit buggy and doesn't select properly now what we can actually do is we can go in here, we can choose that vertex group, all right? Now when I adjust the factor, it's not going to really manipulate the vertices that are part of this vertex group here, right? Or the, the other ones, right? Because these are the only ones getting affected. So I can actually go in here, let's go back to object mode, and I can actually kind of move this until we're in a better position. Now. Again, this isn't mathematically precise. This isn't 100%, but it's about 95% accurate. And most of the time, that's going to be enough. Now, I would recommend using a cleaner mat cap because this one, you can't really see how good it is. If you're creating stuff like cars or organic shapes, this is very important. Now, I would recommend a mat cap like this. And you can kind of see very quickly 
If I turn this off, you can see how distorted that shading is. But if I turn this smooth modifier back on, I can hold shift and I can just adjust this until it's kind of flowing through there as you know perfectly as we can get it. Now there's actually something else you can do. You can stack smooth modifiers. You can actually go in here, you can duplicate that, move this up, and you can actually stack a smooth modifier on the other one. This is going to give you additional control. So I can kind of go in here and flex that a little bit more. And you're going to see the before and after. If I turn both of those off, this is the before. It's very, you know, crappy shading. I'll have to go to a shinier one here. You can see that. But if I turn these back on, now we have much, much smoother shading. This is a very useful technique. And just to really, you know, emphasize what this is doing, I can go in here to this matte cap and I can basically turn that one on, then you're gonna see the second one kind of refines everything, it smooths everything out a bit more to give us this shape right here. So that's all there is to it. It's a very simple modifier, very easy modifier, and you can see just how quickly you can go from a shape like this, which is very bumpy, the shading isn't clean, and then turn it into something like this where you have you know, 95% clean shading, and in most cases that's completely enough. You don't need to go any further than that. Hope this is useful. And again, guys, if you want to learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow, check out our accelerator program. This is the number one hard surface modeling course with thousands of student results you can see on the screen right now. And we're going to get you very, very good at hard surface modeling in about two weeks of time with about an hour per day of work, sometimes less. And I don't know anybody else out there delivering these types of results this quickly. So if you want to skip the whole YouTube tutorial grind and just get results as quickly as possible, so you can start your own projects. Check out that program in the link in the top of the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.